All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, happy CT month to all of you. I, I, I hope you are celebrating in some way. We've got a lot to celebrate this month, Black History Month as well. And uh, so welcome. Let's uh, take a minute and, and post your responses in the chat, please. I know we have some new faces as well. I see uh, Michael Richards. Uh, he's going for the Rams, but he's a 49er faithful. All right, that's good. I want to see more. So introduce yourselves, please, as we let others join the meeting. And uh, let's let's let them, let's see it. We got some. And then we'll get started in just a couple of minutes. You're welcome, Tina. Shafad, mine is saying that I can only do a direct message uh, to individual people. It doesn't say everyone. And I believe okay. our, but I'm going, I don't have a particular team. <laughs> They're both good. Yeah, no, let's see. I think that's something that Yvonne, uh, Yvonne, did you hear that, Yvonne? Maybe you can change the setting so that uh, they can post and everybody else can see it. Uh, yes, I'll double check, but I, okay, I'll double check. No worries. Okay. Jessica, it doesn't have a drop down menu where it says private. There's no drop down menu. Um, it's funny because Carrie and Andy and myself all say the same thing. I only can go to people, the co host, host and co host. That's the only thing that it's letting me. The same thing with mine. Okay. Let's see. We'll, we'll try and see if we can, uh, we can fix that. I just changed it to everyone. There it is. Okay, all right. All right, so rooting for the Rams. Everybody's bolting up. We got uh, Carol rooting for the Bengals. Tina staying out of it, Patriots. I wonder who Don's rooting for. <sighs> Yeah, you know, we can't, Don, we can't hear you. I know that rarely happens, but we can't hear you. I'll put a booyah on there for you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> booyah. Oh, there you yeah. go. I go can't get my you. background. I'm trying to support the Alliance here. The CTE world. Maybe that's a little too much information. Sorry, guys. That's all right. Oh, I see Kerry is going for the Bengals. All right, Kerry. Uh, all right, good. Well, let's let's get started now. I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, people got a chance to kind of introduce themselves. Uh, you know, let's do this real quick. I think if you are new to the collaborative, I know since we last met, which was a long, long time ago, uh, and a lot has happened. I know people have kind of shifted positions as well, and we've got some new folks on the team. So if you are new to the collaborative, uh, can you please just uh, unmute yourself and turn on your camera if possible? for just a second and introduce yourself uh, to the rest of the group, that'd be great. Hi everyone, I know a few of you, um, but I'm new to the collaborative. My name is Jennifer McDaniel and I'm now with Tomorrow's Talent. I am um, a workforce development um, part of Tomorrow's Talent. So it's very nice to meet you and see those of you that I already know again. Hey, Kim. <laughs> All right, Hi. welcome, Jennifer. I'm Hillary Wolf. I am the new um, Executive Director of College Career and Economic Development at Montana Unified. I started in December. Um, so this is my first work-based learning collaborative meeting. Awesome. I'm Bob Kirby, Program Specialist for Advanced Learners in San Bernardino City Unified School District. Good to be here. Welcome, Bob. Good to have you. Who else? I'm looking for seeing who else. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly Williams. Kelly, is this your first time uh, at the collaborative? Hi, yeah. My name's uh, Kelly Williams, CT coordinator for Victor Valley Union High School District. I may have attended a few meetings in the past, but 
Um, here I am. <laughs> and you were, you were at Snowline as well, right before? So you were I was at Snowline before, yes. Well, good. Long time no see. Good to see you back. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Who else do we have? Summer. I see Summer. I'm just looking at my, my board here. Yeah, I'm here. I've been a part of the collaborative for a little bit. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, well, um, if you uh, don't get a chance to introduce yourself now, and if you're able to join later, then please introduce yourself later as we go through. So let's get started. Um, again, happy CTE month. I hope you've all had a chance to, uh, uh, to celebrate a little bit. Um, as you can see from our backgrounds, uh, here's one way in which we're celebrating as we get into meetings uh, and just kind of showing and, and, and discussing some of the things that CTE does for our students. So uh, let's get started. Um, I want to start off with um, our uh, partner in, in our partner spotlight today. You know, in education, one of the things that we always talk about is student engagement, right? We always think about what is the best tool we can find, right? Keep in our pocket to engage students. And I think the, the company that I want to introduce next, who's been our partner at the Alliance for what seems like forever, but I think it's only been about a year or so, uh, you know, ju does just that, right? They really elevate um, the engagement game. They take uh, engagement to a whole new level. Um, they employ gamification uh, specifically designed uh, to attract and grow a more skilled workforce. And again, we've partnered with them for the past year. And so with that, you know, with that said, I'm going to introduce uh, Tina and Cynthia, and they'll share with you more about their company uh, and how they support our work. So uh, take it away, ladies. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Thanks for having us here. I'm going to pop my screen on since we're in presentation mode. Oh, there we go. All right. We'll say hello that way. So yes, um, if you all want another nickname for Shazad, we call him the original gamester because <laughs> he is the one that discovered the work that we're doing. And Carol and Kim and Shazad were full speed ahead with a year ago, just embracing what technology could, um, how it could support all of the work that you do. And so I'm Tina Smolinski. I'm the founder, co-founder with Cynthia Jenkins, who's gonna jump on and say hello in a minute um, and take over the screen or take over the video part of it um, and introduce herself as well. But okay. we're gonna jump in. It's Friday, it's oh. Super Bowl weekend. It's fun in California. So. During this conversation, Shazad gave us about 20 minutes to kind of share what we're doing with them um, and share how it can help you. But we also want to hear from you. So put some things in the chat. We're going to leave time at the end to have a little discussion. But and there's a lot of energy on this call. So if you want to unmute and just ask a question or share something midway, it's Friday. Let's, let's do that. So let me share my screen. I'll jump in. I'm on the East Coast. That's why I put Patriots in, but I'm all for LA this weekend. I want some wins there for you all. Um, Cynthia has the office in Orange County where the actual game development takes place in the creative. On our side is the research um, and the sales teams and the support and the uh, student engagement. So we get we cover the country. And we are celebrating a year this month with your team. And it's so exciting. And we're gonna show you what's happened there, what's happened with the kids and just give you a little history. So let me share my screen um, and see if I can get this pulled up quickly for you all. Um, here we go. And let me see if I can move this. Okay, there we go. So our company's name is Skills Gap, and it is the challenge and the solution all in one word. We're looking to fill the skills gap that is out there, and we're using an app as a solution. Uh, and the games that we have are called Skillionaire Games. So myself and Cynthia, there she is. You'll see her in a few minutes. And uh, James, lead the team. And our background, really similar to a lot of you, all of us on this call care about the students and are really wanting to support their success in their careers and their pathway. So our background is we had a branding and marketing firm for 25 years that focused on economic development and students. And along the way, there was this 
just this little bug in us that was like, this, a lot of what's happening is not working. And the industry and economic development and education have got to work harder together um, so that awareness of CTE programs, that parents can have conversations with their kids, that students are asking. And so three years ago, we really unraveled what we were doing and just said, we have to do it differently. And we're willing to put a stake in the ground to come alongside educators and economic development and really push for a way to reach the students more. So we've done a lot of work in economic development with states, regions, um, federal and states. Um, I shared about our marketing, the B2B and B2C. We worked with millennials and we met Gen Z and Gen Z and how they think and, and how they are is just a special generation and we're excited about them. And we know that they have a challenge ahead of them. And then from the gaming world, I'll share a little bit of our experience of that in, in, on a slide in a second, but just a little bit of data. You may know this, you may not, but I know that when you see the students around school, they all have a phone in front of their face. 95% um, of students have access to a smartphone. Now, in under-resourced areas and you get into rural areas and depending on the age, there is some flux in that, but it may be where they have access through a parent's phone. 90% um, of them call themselves gamers, or at least they play the mobile phone games and may not use the term gamers, but they do play games and it's 90% of them. What's interesting for all of us on this call are these next two stats is that 59% of this Gen Z audience that are in your schools right now think that the education system would be better with real life work learning in it. So Congratulations to everybody on this call because that is meeting the stu the, what the students want in education and the programs that you have there are excellent when you look across the nation and what's available to students. And then that last stat is that 53% of them really want industry involved to show them the trends and what's happening out there. And so the participation that the Alliance has with bringing industry in and with all of your programs that connect to industry is fantastic. Um, for the pathway for these students that are in your region. So here's a little bit of the background behind why do we leave our branding and marketing firm and focus on mobile gaming with the support of those stats. Our development team that have come in under us are the um, have worked on all the games that the kids play, mostly mobile, 70% uh, deployment. So just wanted to put this up to bring a little credibility behind the games that we're building so that we know that they're working. <laughs> Uh, and that the main purpose of our games was that the games would be fun, like the games that they're playing, the Pokemon Go games, Among Us, but that we're encouraging that career uh, awareness and connectivity to the pathways through the play. So this is really what radically changed our career direction was this challenge, which you all know the pains from, is that by the time Gen Z learns about skills-based careers, Many have chosen another path. Preparing and making them aware of these opportunities earlier isn't just the key to our future, but to theirs too. So we're a firm believer in catching them in the middle school to get that spark of desire um, for careers that they may never have known about and to help them be aware of, hey, when you're going into high school, think about a science class for a STEM pathway and that it can solve, you can work on in the future, uh, you know, cures for cancer or look at a skilled trade CTE program where you can do really well in construction, in fact, could be making $100,000 in a couple of years with welding. And so that was that spark of let's start middle school, let's continue the play through high school so that the kids think about also, there's still opportunities to make some decisions in high school about course selection, but then also in the future that they're thinking about, hmm, apprenticeships, internships opportunities, and that they're also aware of there's many pathways to a career. There's four year, there's two year. And sometimes you can go right in with a certificate program, but what we're identifying for these kids is what's best for the individual, not for the whole. And uh, how can we have that success? So with that question and challenge, a lot of times the CTE programs fill up or the parents didn't understand what they were, or in middle school, they're not thinking about that choice already for high school. So for us, the question was, how could we scale this conversation, which really led to that mobility 
of a mobile phone to be able to reach more outside of school um, so that they can be playing uh, wherever they are, whether it's at home, on the bus, um, at the store, wherever that is. And so this slide we normally put into presentations with economic development because here is your next generation right in front of us that is your workforce um, and that these phones can reach the and engage with middle school and high schoolers so that you have this pipeline built in that you could be recruiting from to come in. And so you're all the ones that are preparing the students this way and that this, these games can come alongside you and support you um, and also support industry. And so our games are mobile deployed. They're free to play for students. They um, are um, for iPhone, Android, um, but also, you know, Carol and Kim and Shazad challenged us in some ways for with the Stemma Palooza last year for the Chromebooks, especially with everybody at home still. And so our games do deploy on Chromebooks so that they can be used in class. We can talk about this a little more at the end um, when it comes to work-based learning and if there's opportunities for how it can be used in the schools to support teachers, but really to support the CTE awareness and that pathway uh, into high school. And so I'm going to turn over to our, <laughs> um, my other co-founder um, and let her run. Well, the actually, Tina, I, if you, hello, everyone, I'm Cynthia Jenkins. I'm actually a 49ers fan, but I, I did say Rams because they were close because I'm born and raised in San Francisco. Um, but Tina, if you don't mind, keep leading it and I'll, and I'll just uh, talk. All right. All right. So you can see, so our mantra at Skills Gap is play with a higher purpose. And you can see between our name and our mantra, we're clearly a fan of um, double entendres as well. <laughs> so as Tina was saying, um, in terms of when we work with the Alliance, they, uh, they really challenged us this time last year um, to uh, play with a higher purpose, specifically for a Stomach Palooza event that was this time last year. Um, so so engagement was a real concern. Obviously, we're all virtual last year. And so, um, and I, I can see Kim even has this year's uh, Stemma Palooza uh, backdrop behind him. Looked a little different last year, but what, what we were tasked with doing was gamifying the three C's for the IE STEM initiative. And that was cybersecurity, kind of awareness and exposure, critical thinking and communication. So what we did is we, we developed a, a sort of a, an in-event narrative behind a notorious hacker named Blackout who was planning a cyber attack on the event. And so players were tasked with completing challenges to thwart his efforts in order to save the day. And then at the end, uh, players received certificates that they could show their teachers for free homework passes, or it was sort of up to the teacher's um, discretion. So well, I'll show you a little bit about how that, this worked. As Tina was saying, um, these, these specifically, you could play on the phone, but it was web-based, um, not on the app store because it was so quick. But we allowed the kids to um, create their account and pick their avatars before the event. The reason I mentioned that, this is really important because as you'll see, um, there's a big you know, lack of awareness of where cybersecurity fits in the world. And so we wanted to show that um, the avatars would represent different trades that need cyber from utilities to arts and entertainment. And then we had four five minute timed challenges that were incorporated into the event at specific times that um, simulated real world scenarios like uh, locating corrupted blocks of data or monitoring power grids on this particular one, reconnecting networks, um, and then at the end of each challenge, they were fed specific cybersecurity tips and facts. So how much, how much you can make, um, different kinds of, of roles you could play. And then actually this one was very challenging. I think only Kim and Tina were able to do well on this one. This is the waveform analysis, but also give them real pathways of, of how they can pursue more um, either class or career in cyber. And at the end, again, here's the, the badge of completion, which of course is really important. There was a leaderboard too, to see how people could do among um, uh, their peers. And so this, this was a huge success. In fact, um, we, we did a, or Kim conducted a, a post, post event survey about 48 hours after. And remember these are fourth through eighth graders, so young, youngish. 
Um, and their, their recall, not just of the event, but the specific uh, facts about the careers and salaries, et cetera, was about 89 or 90 percent. So the alliance came back to us again and said, OK, let's blow this up. And so for high school specifically, um, we are now in the process of developing a mobile um, ongoing play, real big time game specific for cybersecurity. We, um, we do have a little to show you today. It is in progress. So uh, kind of a, a trailer that I'll, I'll be quiet for a moment so you guys can um, watch it. And then I'll, I'll we'll sort of break down and show you how it works afterwards. So I'm hoping that's actually why I had T Tina, Tina run it because for some reason it was super glitchy on my screen. So apologize if that, if that did um, glitch a little bit, but you can see uh, essentially how we're able to in a, in a similar to um, Hackout Blackout, which we showed you in this game too. We don't have a name yet. So we might at the end of the, in the chat, Shazad, maybe we'll do a little survey <laughs> since we're down to a couple, but we're able to incorporate different facts about cybersecurity and pathways and even incorporate some opportunities and incentives for them to pursue a career or a class um, in cyber within the game. And we'll explain a little bit more. Also in our games is um, we do incorporate soft skills. Uh, you know, we hear from industry all the time, you know, give me someone with soft skills and I'll teach them the technical skills. Um, so the Alliance challenged us yet again for a game exclusive for soft skills. And so we actually are using um, MDEP's uh, essential skills um, guide and that's underway to where I think we're deploying probably in the fall, we'll have an app specifically for soft skills um, for high school, maybe even middle school. I'm not, we're not sure yet, but I, I know that um, Shazad and Carol and Kim will keep y'all apprised of that. And we also um, support not just cyber industries, but aerospace, which of course is huge in our industry, bioscience, automotive, and skilled trades. Um, the way, so the way these work essentially, um, other than being super, super fun, they are deployed on the app store. Um, so, so technically anyone could kind of play, but they are deployed regionally by state or by region. And how we do that, it's all COPA compliant is we, um, as they register, we have their zip code. So they are fed content specific to local industry, jobs, resources, types of skills needed, what companies are looking for. And they're able to see information on CTE programs, apprenticeships, job fairs, post-secondary pathways. And then as they play, they earn badges for light skills and soft skills. And these are badges that um, are, are aligned with um, curriculum inspired or industry inspired standards. Again, these are games that are super fun to play. They're not gamified textbooks, but they are meaningful badges and levels that um, are shareable and do have some quantifiable metrics for industry to recruit from, et cetera. Um, and so, uh, you know, we all know interactive activities um, are, are, are more effective for kids to learn, but this, this is a really meaningful stat from Carnegie Mellon, but actually they're six times more likely to help students learn. And so um, that's in terms of gaming as a platform, it's been really as evidenced by some of our testimonials. This is specifically from, from Hackout. And this is exactly what we wanna see. You know, this game was fun. I learned the games that could teach the skills I need to have a career. There's many jobs, they pay well. These are the kinds of, of outcomes we want. And then of course, incorporated into the game is uh, ways for them to pursue those careers. So this actually is our last slide. So. Um, uh, and then we'll be open to any questions, but 
the anticipated outcomes of our games, these are all tracked um, from a from data that's that's uh, we work with the Alliance on specifically, but it's essentially career and pathway awareness specific to your region, ongoing engagement with students about careers, both in and out of game. Our hope is for more students choosing career pathways unique to their interests, going into CTE and even STEM. Um, also post-secondary, more internship and youth apprenticeship programs with more students involved, and then industry two and four-year institutions being able to engage and recruit proactively. And like I said before, we're able to see all COPA compliance. We're not hiding anything or hiding any broccoli, but being able to recruit based on proficiencies and interests. And then um, of course, aid, aid the industry and recruitment and company expansions. So that's the end of our show. And of course, we were hoping to have a little time for, for any sort of questions or comments. I'm not sure if I went over Shazad. No, I think you're good. So um, please entertain any questions or comments people may have. Uh, and I think even, even seeking some feedback on, on the couple of uh, uh, titles for the games, that, we're about, <laughs> that would be kind of neat too. So please, anybody just unmute yourselves and ask any questions or any thoughts you may have to share. Karen, I would love to hear your comment in there about your daughter, um, your fourth grader, sorry, you didn't say daughter, um, playing and any feedback that you had from the comments at home that they were sharing. Yes, luckily last year, or last year my kids were school from home, so I was with them and they had so much fun. He would, like on his breaks from class, he'd come into my office, he's like, can I play that game again? Can I play that game again? <laughs> and then, you know, the last one, obviously, was hard and tricky and challenging for him, but he really enjoyed just playing it. And then he keeps asking like, hey, remember that game about cybersecurity? When is that coming back in? I'm like, well, Final Blues is coming back. <laughs> so it was just neat to see him, like as a parent, just watching him do it, the challenge and that he didn't get frustrated even though it was, there was parts that were really challenging. So I found it really fun as a former computer teacher to watch my kid interact with it. So it was That's a really great. fun experience. Great. Anyone else? Danny, as far as access to the game, Kim can share a little bit about when Hackout is coming back. And then as far as the new game that's deploying, we're pushing for like a mid-April um, deployment through the app stores. The team will keep you updated on when that happens. But Kim, do you want to speak a little bit to the STEM of Palooza? Oh, uh, well, I, that's, I'm next for 10 minutes oh, about STEM oh, Palooza. Oh. But. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, there is a question. Um, the question is, is there a way to access this game at this time? That's from Danny, I think. Right. So, so for um, Hackout Blackout, that is going live again on the 25th for, in February uh, of this month, I guess, for STEM Palooza. Our current game, I, and this actually may have answered it. Sorry, Danny is going to be deployed um, mid-April. And that'll be free on the app store, so it'll be available then. We will be uh, we'll be blasting out information about that when it, when it does go live. So yeah. you guys will probably be some of the first to hear about it, so. Yeah, maybe even test it. We're excited to, um, for a lot of media coverage on what uh, Carol and her team have um, deployed with this to support all of you and, and just that the, the media is very excited about what, what you all are doing through this gaming. So it's going to be exciting over the next few months. I should mention too, uh, um, in terms of the, I know we said they're curriculum inspired um, and industry standards, specifically for this cyber game, we are um, complying with the NICCS uh, standards and, and, you know, with cyber ones and cyber twos. And so um, those are right on the money for um, national standards. Something they didn't share with you too is that this new game, the, the high school cyber game is in collaboration with Cal State San Bernardino um, and their cyber program. Um, and as well as uh, David Thurston here at SBCSS and his statewide network um, that's looking at cybersecurity across the state. So we are getting um, a lot of input from industry and from our partners across the community. Uh, Cal State San Bernardino would like to see how we can lift this to a national platform. So those are conversations that are starting to happen as well. 
As for us, when this does launch, obviously um, it will be accessible through phones or through mobile devices. Um, but for our teachers, um, if they want to put that, if you have Chromebooks, um, that will be something that we will have to send out information with regards to working with your districts to whitelist um, that so that, that not whitelist, so that they can load the app onto those Chromebooks for the students and the students can participate in the classroom should a teacher not want students pulling out their phones. So we are working and chipping away at access um, issues, but we're not letting that stop us from putting something together that um, we think will really promote um, a high need industry in this area. And we think we can really tie it in a very fun way. And I think just to kind of build on what Carol was saying, we're always seeking feedback. I know the Skills Gap team is looking for feedback as well to kind of test it out. Uh, I know we had uh, you know several students from Cal State San Bernardino uh, who have provided feedback on the game as well. Uh, I know Mr. Miles in San Bernardino City, his class, you know, he's kind of provided feedback as well. So if you have a group of students, uh, you know, in computer science or in the cyber class that you feel can add some value, right, please feel free to reach out to us. And we'll be able to kind of solicit, find some way to kind of solicit some feedback from that group, because that's really important. The game is meant for our students to be able to play and enjoy and learn from. And so their feedback through this process is really critical. We're open to kind of to seeking that as well. All right. So with that said, um, Cynthia, do you want to get feedback on, on the on the name or? Well, you and, I, and you know, Yvonne, I, I didn't mean to throw you a curveball, um, but we were we have a, a few names, but the, there's some two um, kind of dead ringers, and there are two of them. And to give you a little bit of the premise of the game, so you saw a little bit of is essentially you're you're working for a cybersecurity company as a third party, and you're dealing with all of these cyber issues and data encrypting and power outages, and then you may have to go to a bank. And um, there's it, it's it's a very uh, it's a very fast, challenging game where they're hacking hacking challenges of all times of power, money, identity. Um, so it's, there's a lot of energy that you're trying to save more than the day, but possibly the world. So we've got Gigabyte Guardians and we have What the Hack right now. Those are two that we're swimming around. There's a couple others, but those are the two I'd be most interested. So Gigabyte Guardians, What the Hack. Of those two, if you want to put them in chat. Or maybe it's directly to Yvonne. I, I'm... <laughs> I, like I, I have one that says uh, hack attack. I think Dimitri came up with his own name. I like yes. it. Hack attack. That's one of them. Okay, <laughs> Dimitri, that's one of them. And believe it or not, it's taken. All right, so give us some thoughts. G Gigabyte Guardians. Gigabyte Guardians. And what's the hack? What the hack? We did have Hacked of Duty um, and Cyber Watchdogs was another one. All right, I see. Hillary what likes the what the hack. I'm with you, Hillary. That was my my yeah, my pick as well. Yeah. What the hack? All right, we got some what the hackers. Hi, I have a question here. This is Danny. Sure, Danny. Go so, ahead. um, are are they playing? Because I I do have a background in cybersecurity. Um, do they have a a, a, a which side they're taking? Is it offensive or defensive? Because then that that would affect what the name would be. Because red or blue, go, right? Attack, right. Yeah, yes. red, red team, blue team. Red team, blue team. Well, um, it's it's sort of nebulous. That's a really, really good question. So we're we're presenting kind of both sides in different ways. Okay. Um, so it's a little agnostic, but that's a very good question, which is, you're right, it has affected. The, right. The, the, if you go hack attack, that's more on the offensive yeah. side. If you go watchdogs, then that's on the yep. defensive side. So yeah. yeah. We're trying to stay agnostic, but essentially the player is more of a superhero defensive. Okay, okay. So something in the defensive name would be more appropriate in that case. Yeah. In fact, we've even, and Mr. Miles is not on this call, I don't think, um, Shazad, we've even incorporated, you know, this is this ethical hacking concept of white hat, black hat, gray hat. Um, so it's, we even have some sort of emotional sort of ethical stuff we're incorporating in yeah. um which is which has been really fun yeah yeah well no guys thank you for your feedback everybody and yeah I thank you out to you uh thank you tina and cynthia for presenting and, and sharing what we're doing and uh this is a, a perfect segue um you know into uh stemapalooza and uh, you know 
Um, you know, we always hear about this phrase, right? Kids don't know what they don't know, right? right. I think it's really important that, you know, as you think about Stena Palooza, which is right around the corner, and I know Kim's going to share a lot more with you, um, you know, this is our opportunity to give our students that opportunity to learn about what exists out there. So uh, Kim will share more and perhaps uh, he'll give you a sneak peek as well. So Kim, uh, it's all you. Kim, we can't hear you. I can hear you because you're talking to me. But <laughs> <fine>. <laughs> okay. Um, good morning. Uh, I'm going to share with you guys a little bit about Stemma Palooza. I'm excited. Um, actually, you know what? I'm just going to jump us right in um, to Stemma Palooza. But um, yeah, let me just let me just jump right in. Uh, did I share my screen? Do you, do you see, yeah, do you see, see do you yeah, see the lobby? See it. yep. Okay. It's not showing the, usually it shows a big green um, frame around my, my screen when I'm sharing it. Okay. Um, so this is the lobby uh, where, where students will come. And from here, this is where everyone, um, it's like the home base. Um, so there's like uh, six or so main areas. The first area is called Just Saying. And when we go into that area, you guys are getting a sneak peek here. You know, not everyone gets to see this kind of stuff. Um, so this is the, um, just saying it's kind of our, like our keynote uh, spot where we can see all the, um, the keynotes will be here. Um, we're going to be releasing keynotes uh, a, few at a, a few each day uh, between the 22nd and the 25th. Um, our, our next, we'll go back to the lobby. We'll go to the cinema. So this whole thing has kind of a 80s retro, 90s uh, mall kind of feel. Uh, I, I call it multiplex. Um, but anyway, so in here we have, uh, in the cinema, we have four different types of content. We have the professionals, which basically this is um, local professionals talking about um, uh, how they use STEM in their work and the importance of STEM skills. And they're short, little 60 to 90 second videos. Um, let's see, I'll just pick one here. Uh, transportation, maybe. So we have in here, we have anyone from a, uh, a NASA mechanical ground systems engineer talking about that or a automotive technician from John Elway with Crown Toyota. And they're short, little, uh, quick little videos. Um, that, uh, to, you know, it's designed to be quick for the kids so they don't get bored. Um, going back, so, and then the Pathways to the Future, same kind of thing, except for this is high school pathways, right? Um, on, on how to, uh, or where they can get skills in high school. To make them aware that there's academies and pathways out there that, that can show them the skills to get into these industry sectors. Um, going back here, and so same, same kind of deal, you click here and then, there's a high school pathway, Adelanto. Um, and then it's a video about their pathway. So anyway, uh, so, so and this, this is for fourth through eighth graders, uh, Stemma Palooza is. Let's see, going here to higher ground, this is uh, post-secondary pathways. Um, so we have the, the careers, the skills, and how to get them. That's the main uh, thing about Stemma Palooza. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Let me go here. And then another thing that we have, oh, uh, you know what, Jen, you're going to get a kick out of this. I'm going to have to show this because Jen's on the call. Um, this will take her home for a minute um, if it will load with all this stuff going on. Um, so we have uh, 360, some 360 tours that we have put together. Um, these have a lot of potential that we're tapping more and more into. This is a, a new thing that we're kind of learning, but just to kind of show you guys just real quick, a couple uh, things through here that you can, wait, did I pass Jen's desk? No, I think it's over here somewhere. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, they can kind of, it's just like be in there. I'm gonna make you dizzy if I move that. Carol will yell at me. She gets mad when I move the mouse. Um, but I just kind of wanted to show you some of the, uh, the, the potential here. So uh, it can, it, the 360 tours have little things like this, can show you what things are, you can click on, 
Um, it even has the capability of narrating the room, like, hi, this is the electrical room, and that kind of thing. So this is a, a thing that we're further developing. Um, but right now, um, we have a few tours in here to show off. Um, but as we uh, get better at working with the platform, those will get better and better. Um, and those will be available um, after, even beyond Stemapalooza, we will have be sharing those uh, through our SB Connect, I think. Okay, so going, that was the, so that's everything in the cinema. Then in the arcade, we have these, um, we have six levels. Uh, and within the six levels, there's over 70 act activities that, that kids can do in here. Activities are both hands-on, Oh, I didn't start my timer, so I don't know where I am on time. Anyway, okay, so uh, um, you'll, you'll let me know, Shazad, right? Uh, okay, um, so uh, basically uh, kids can access the activities by clicking on a level and then picking an industry sector icon. Here's a cool little activity on um, book binding. Um, these are uh, designed by our amazing, our amazing um, uh, curriculum specialists here. Um, Anyway, so this book binding, so this is like story of the book and then hands-on activity. So they got to get these materials and then it has the instructions on how to do it. And they can actually go and, and create um, these books. Now, some of these are actually um, web-based. Um, so in case you don't have the resources to get the, the supplies and that kind of stuff, there's activities for, for those as well. So, um, and then what we're doing is you see the levels. The level doesn't really mean that it's harder than the previous level. It's just a way of categorizing them. So on the first day, we'll release level one and two. On the second day, levels three and four. And on the fourth day, five and six, our uh, third day, five and six. And then um, this icon down here should look uh, familiar to skills gap, um, but this will lead to right now it's, well, you can kind of get a little thing here, but, uh, It'll lead to registration for um, for blackout. Um, so that's the activity arcade. Um, blackout will be attacking on Friday, and so like pop-ups will pop up. Hey, we're under attack! Um, and throughout the week, they will be invited to uh, sign uh, set up their um, avatar. And then, under uh, really excited about CS Snacks. It's one of our new things that we have. Um, these are interviews with industry professionals from computer science um, and uh, people from Google to University of Redlands. It's you know, a wide variety of, of folks, um, Go Guardian. Um, so anyway, and then if the, kid, the kids will watch these a little, I'll just kind of show you what they, it's, it's like, a, it's basically like a YouTube, but it's, but they're little, um, they're little uh, interviews with them. And then if they want, if the kids want to ask them a question, we have, uh, a Padlet wall here where they can actually click in here and they can ask a question of that particular interviewee. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And that's will be moderated by um, a person. Um, and then going back to see us next, the skills, these are little videos uh, where they can develop a, a computer science skills. Some of them are uh, programming. Um, some of them are making a video game, um, but they're little, uh, kind of like how-to videos on, on how to access those things, an hour of code information. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's, the, that's most of the, the content. Um, the uh, one, one thing that we're, we're building into this is a way for student work to be shared. And the way we're doing that is through um, our uh, tag box, which basically is going to, um, we're going, to, it's basically a social wall that's moderated, that basically um, teachers will be able to post a student's work and with the hashtag and we'll be going through to see if it's appropriate and posting it here so others can see the work the kids have done. So when they build their book binding activity and they have their book and they wanna show it off, they can come here and show it off. Uh, but if they don't come here and show it off, I'm sorry, the teacher will, will either post it on Instagram or Twitter and it'll pop up here. So um, anyways, and then as they find content, um, they can share that, uh, Select that content. Oh, I, oh, there's one more room I didn't show. The, um, the career zone. In the career zone, we have uh, the, the 10 industry sectors we're focusing on. And um, we have in here uh, a, a, a lesson, a short lesson with information on careers in that industry sector. And actually, let me show you really quick. Um, these are done with Spark. 
similar to very very similar to last year's. But these are all smaller nuggets. There, the last year we had them uh, lessons that 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 had like three or four activities in them. These the lessons in here are shorter. Now this one here, this is the LMI that we have for each of the ten industry sectors that we're focusing on. So. Essentially, the Career Center has information on careers in those industries and LMI information um, for each of the industry sectors. So exciting. And so like, oh, see right here, the little, this actually should be a backpack, but um, this little briefcase, if you click here, it saves that into the briefcase and then they can come back and look at their briefcase with the stuff that they've saved. And if they're PDFs, they can actually download them. Okay, I think that's it for the content of... Yeah. Uh, that. You're right. You're right on time too, Kim. Oh, Thank you. okay. Well, I need to share one more thing. I'm sorry, Shazad. Okay. Uh, what I'm, <laughs> um, if you want any information about uh, this, please refer your teachers here to this bit.ly. Um, let me copy that into the chat. I, I put it in the chat too. Oh, you Kim. already put it in go the ahead, chat. Okay. Go ahead and put that as well in case mine doesn't work. Um, um, okay. And then just, uh, this is what it looks like. It has a registration. And uh, if you if you want to register, you can come in here and click on guest registration. Uh, that's for anyone that's not a student or a teacher. And you can come check it out and then come back here and this is where you'll go back in. But it has our teacher toolkit, our gamer guide and our student data privacy information. Awesome. Okay, cool. I'll go ahead and paste that in there and I'm done. Awesome, Kim, if you can stop sharing. Guys, again, there's a lot more information to um, where, you know, where Kim is kind of pointing you to. And I think if you click on that link, you'll be able to see everything that's available for our students. Uh, you know, that's one of the things that we do, right, to kind of create our pipeline of students. I think what I, what I want to introduce next is SB Connect. And if you haven't noticed yet, man, there's a lot going on with SB Connect. Uh, Michael and his team are hopping all around the county trying to connect our local students, right, with our local employers. So with that said, uh, Michael, uh, take it away. Wonderful, wonderful. Can everyone see my screen? Yep, we can. Wonderful. So today I'm going to be sharing with you our SB Connect online platform. Um, it's SB Connect is a video conferencing platform intended to impact the quality of the school to career pipeline. Our Michael, goal can you just can you change it to slideshow mode so everybody can see on the. the yes, one second. Awesome. Thank you. So SB Connect is a video conferencing platform intended to impact the quality of the school to career pipeline. Our goal is to increase the workforce preparedness uh, by exposing the K-12 students to real world experiences. SB, the Alliance does this by providing virtual tours, demonstrations, virtual mentoring and work-based learning opportunities. And this provides a real work experiences and the attainment of transferable skills, as well as the awareness of emerging, emerging occupations throughout the Inland Empire. So I wanna kind of give you a snapshot of our progress just this year. Uh, the SB Connect Industry Chats uh, did start in August. We have had 30 uh, sessions uh, between August and to date. Uh, that gives you a snapshot of the participants by month. We've reached over 5,600 students throughout the Inland Empire. So at sbcalliance.org, educators will be able to go to our website where they will be able to not only see what we do at the Alliance, but also see upcoming chats and opportunities to engage our educators and our uh, businesses from around the Inland Empire. <clears throat> there we host an industry chat library where educators will be able to access recorded sessions um, by sector. Uh, we've had the opportunity to provide several series, some of which include the Health Professions Week and Entrepreneurship Month. Here you see 
how our website uh, tracks each individual session, how educators can go in and register for each individual session right off of our website. So what we have here is just a, a, a view of just a few of the sessions that we've been able to provide this year. We've reached out to entrepreneur or small business of the year, um, One Love IE, Justin Hudson. Um, we've dealt, had several series with UCR and their School of Science um, PhD students. Um, we've also had a culinary arts series um, with Sweet Obsessions and Mama Helen's right here in San Bernardino. And one thing that I, I, I'm really proud of is our effort to promote digital equity. And so we've been able to start a Spanish series. Again, yes, a Spanish series where we've been able to provide sessions in Spanish for our EL classrooms all across the Inland Empire. And so to date, now we have delivered three Spanish series um, to middle and high school students in the Inland Empire. Um, also, we have two more um, sessions for uh, remaining in the month. Actually, we have three more sessions remaining in the month, one with dreamers, leaders, visionaries, and leaders from the Inland, from the high desert region as well as one with the mayor of Victorville and council women, Stevana Evans from Adelanto. So here's just a, a quick list as I'm, I'm gearing down um, of some of the industry chats that we've been able to uh, provide this year. You may recognize some of our partners. Um, again, we've been able to uh, engage our, our, our network of, of business partners throughout the Inland Empire and at our post-secondary level as well. So in closing, um, you can reach out to me at the information that I've provided there to um, connect your school or your agency um, with the Alliance and to, again, um, a register for any of our upcoming sessions. Again, thank you. I'll go ahead and hand it back to Shazad. All right, thank you, Michael, for for sharing that uh, with everybody. Um, you know, I think if you if you haven't had a chance to to get onto one of these chats or haven't had the chance to send this further down to your middle schools, uh, even your elementary students, um, because there are chats that are geared towards those groups as well. Uh, it's a really great opportunity, right, for students to. Um, to see what exists in their backyard, right? Uh, to hear from people that may have similar experiences uh, and to not have to leave their classrooms while doing that all. Uh, I know one of the biggest challenges that we as educators have is finding, um, you know, cost and funding costs for transportation and the liability that comes along with that. Uh, and this really kind of takes that away. Um, again, I think there's no substitution for being somewhere in person, but the idea of valuing instructional time by incorporating these into what you're doing, I think would be awesome. I know as a former science teacher myself, if I had the opportunity uh, that we have now, right, to be able to engage our students with virtual tours, with hearing from experts, uh, I, would, I would have jumped on that. So, uh, so um, great work, Michael, thank you. And I hope uh, all of you can, can share this work uh, with all of your teams as you kind of go forward. Um, so now, um, next we um, uh, have Carol, who will be sharing a little bit about a, an amazing tool that we've been able to kind of put together um, with our centers of excellence uh, in partnership with them. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a map that really kind of brings together uh, high school CTE pathways, community college programs, and labor market data all in one place. Uh, and I know that's something that we had all kind of, you know, in our circles read, had talked about, how can we get this all in one place? And now it's a reality. So as Carol kind of shares more information about this, um, you know, there are a couple of things that I want you to kind of keep in mind, just think about, right? Um, think about what are some ways that you can use this map in the work that you do. Um, and second, right, think about how you, how can your team, whether it's your administrative team, um, whether it's your, you know, uh, you, uh, you know your site team uh, or your teachers, or how can they utilize uh, this tool in the work that they do? So uh, with that, Carol, I will pass it along to you um, and take it away. Okay. 
full disclosure, forgot I was doing this, but I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay, sharing my screen. Shazad, if I get a thumbs up that you can see it. Yeah. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't already heard, there is this amazing map that lets you know all of the career technical education programs through all the high schools across the entire Inland Empire, as well as those programs that are sitting across the Inland Empire in the community colleges as well. Um, and we used to have one that was just for San Bernardino County, and it was just the pathways um, in the high schools um, in partnership with the Centers of Excellence, uh, the Alliance and Centers of Excellence work together to create this beautiful map. This is 1.0 because we're already working on 2.0. What else needs to be added to this map? Um, across our county, things like the, alt, uh, the adult ed programs, the apprenticeship programs, um, things like that, that have databases that are maintained um, on the regular so that the information you see on this map is always current. So we have basically leveraged some of the systems that um, currently exist across our, across our region. So things like our career pathway, uh, coordinate or our pathway coordinators with the community colleges that are being hosted by the K-12s. Um, they have a body of work that they maintain and we just uh, tap into them and help and they help us maintain uh, currency and all of the pathways that exist in all of the high schools. Um, and then also centers of excellence. They do a lot of stuff. They have systems where they have to maintain data on the community college programs. And so we just tap into that to make sure that whatever you see on here is actually current. They also do a lot of the reports. So Shazad's gonna put into the chat a link so that you can just click on it while I'm talking. So you can be playing on it at the same time. You can always go to sbcalliance.org to, to find this link as well. If for some reason you don't, I mean, you lose it. Um, it's on our front page so that you have easy access to it. When we built this, it was with, um, it, it was an answer to the question that an um, industry partner had asked me back when I was at my other district and I was giving him a tour of our welding program and a construction program. And he said, this is fantastic. Where do I find all the other programs like this? And my answer was, I have absolutely no idea. I can tell you what we have. I can send you to another district. Oh, by the way, there's only 33, but I can send you to another district and you can ask them but I have no idea. There is no central location for all of this information. So we started with our little San Bernardino. We thought we were slick. You know, we did the San Bernardino one, had all our pathways. We thought, okay, this is super cool. And people were using it. And people across the state were like, wow, we haven't had that. But then we had our Riverside partner saying, okay, well, what about us? So then when Centers of Excellence wanted to expand, you know, do this work on the community colleges um, and they saw what we had, we said, well, what if we merge the two? because it's really important for us to be able to identify the alignment and misalignment of these programs occurring across our county. And it's really important for our students, our families, to be able to see who's offering what in their region. In the community college system, they have data that shows that the vast majority of their students go to the schools that are right in their community and they stay there. So it's really important to make sure that things are aligning. It's not okay to say, well, if you go to that other community college down the road, then that's where you continue your education. So we really thought from that perspective, what we are happy to know is that business is taking this and blowing it up. People who are um, trying to connect to all of these programs, um, we have industry initiatives where they're trying to build their pipelines and they don't know what's already in existence across our area. So they're able to go on this map and click specifically on the areas that they're interested in. So I won't, I'm going to use the water districts as an example. The water districts are trying to figure out how to get how to replace their retiring um, personnel and they have a need just like every other district out there, every other industry sector out there. By allowing them to know, okay, have you seen this map? They can see if there are districts across the IE who are already training students with the skills, whether they're transferable skills or specific technical skills um, to water, but where are those pockets of people being trained? And then where are the pockets of people being trained on the community college level? And then that helps them direct their efforts 
to reaching out to these individuals and then making those connections. So this is really just a platform for people to use in a million of diff million different ways, but it's really fun to click around on. Um, and it is current. That's the thing, it is current. So if you look in here, obviously we have our icons for each of our industry sectors. And if we were to go into energy and utilities, and hopefully it pops up, This is why I hope you are all on it on your own screen so you guys can be playing. All right, so. Oh, was unresponsive and then decided to respond. So when you're on any of these pages, what you're going to see is obviously the map, which you can zoom in on. And then all of these circles are actual employers. And it's the size of the circle is based on the how big that employer is. That is COE information. Because it's COE, I need to let you know that community colleges, they identify sectors slightly different than what K-12s do. So what we might put in one sector, they might put in something else. So you have to just know that when you're playing around in the data. But you can also click on specific either the high schools, which are in purple, or the colleges, which are in blue, and get little pop-ups so that you can see who that is and what they're teaching. Same with the business partners. You can zoom in so that these things aren't overlapping as much, and you can get more granular if that's what you wanna do. So uh, one of my high desert friends up the hill said, "You know, that would be great for me to be able to open it up and see who's been identified as these business partners as we start to do more outreach. Seems perfect to me. So that way they're not having to guess. They can just look at this database. You'll see that the community college programs are listed. You can sort all of this um, so that they cluster up by, by program um, and the same with the high schools. It's really important from a county office level for us to note that in energy and utilities, we do not have a lot of pathways. So when we're looking at funding, the CTE funding that is coming in like a fire hose at us, and we're looking for opportunities, we want to also consider where are those, where are the opportunities for us to do something where we're not tripping over each other and we're not, you know, and we can expand so more students can get into these other industry sectors um, that desperately need people and pay a really good wage. So if you keep scrolling, you'll see the annual job openings, again, COE data, and COE does these market reports. For all of you on this call, they have to write CTIG plans and or strong workforce plans. Use this as your resource. It'll, you can just pull this stuff up. I did it for mine and it was wonderful. So this is another resource for you. Um, and then that's, that's kind of the gist of it. Um, I always like to look at these numbers here. You know, we only have 3,200 students enrolled in our community colleges. This is 1819 data. Um, in our high schools, 400. That's a problem. But until we have all this data all together, you don't know that that's a problem, right? And so we can start conversation around, okay, so what can we do about that for the better minute of, of our region? If anyone has any questions, happy to answer. Otherwise, you know, just go always go to sbcalliance.org. It is sitting on the front page. Click on it and have fun. Hi, Carol, it's Dimitri. Um, how uh, up to date uh, or how often is this updated, even with 2.0, as far as the data? So COE in, intends to update once a year. Okay. Um, and so be just because of the workload and capacity, um, but the, the, and then, so because they're doing that, then our pathway coordinators will also be submitting the new, you know, they, they double check the pathways that are out in all the districts. Same thing once a year, upload that information. You've got a very ominous looking screen, Dimitri. It's the lighting from the window. The, oh, the whole dark character thing. That's it. I am. That's it. Mm. The evil Greek behind the screen. Yeah, it's that graphic design pathway. It's getting to you. And Dimitri, just to add to your, to your question or to your response as well, um, you know, our K-12 pathway coordinators have played a really instrumental role in getting the information from the K-12 side of things. Uh, I know we've got several of them on this call here. And you know they really work with all of our schools 
uh, and get data from them, right? And, and the information for them and to make sure that's current. And so we've got a system in place now that annually, right? They'll be getting this information from their sites uh, and they will be able to kind of put it on there so that the data is as accurate as can be. Uh, and I know that's a very big part of, of, of this particular tool, right? In terms of how we use it for planning, right? So um, any other questions that, that anybody has or any, any comments that, that come to mind? I would encourage you to plan it. If you're planning on building a pathway, find out who else already has it using this map and reach out to those high schools to ask for content, to ask for a tour of their facility, just, just to start building that network so that you're not reinventing the wheel and we don't have all these different versions of stuff, just work with each other. And this gives you that opportunity to do that pretty quickly because the contact, I mean, there's websites, there's all kinds of things on this. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you, Carol. If you mm -hmm. can, uh, I'm trying. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I think, and, and, you know, one of the things that I think Carol also talked about is if you haven't had the chance to go to our website, right, uh, please do so. I think everything that we talked about today, um, whether it's Kim talking about Stemapalooza, you know, it, it's on our website, right? So it's sitting down here, right? You click on it, you get more information. Um, you know, the career map is right here as well. Right, so it's it's a great resource for a lot of different things. Um, you know, the event calendar that has a list of all the things that are going on in terms of SB Connect chats that are coming up, or our work-based learning collaboratives, or pipeline events, or PDs. So it's a great resource uh, to, to to put and kind of bookmark. Uh, you know, on your bookmarks bar, uh, it's a great tool and a resource for all of us. Um, so with that, I think I want to talk about this question here. Um, but what happens the day after students graduate? You know, as we work in education, right, we always think about how do we prepare students, right, for the day after they graduate for life, right? Life beyond the four walls of our, of our schools, right, our classrooms. And that's a question that really inspired us, right, to, to create a new series of courses uh, for students uh, to, to jumpstart their careers. Uh, we called it um, the Jumpstart Summer Training Programs. Uh, and I'm going to share with you a little bit more about this. Carol, can you see my screen for the jumpstart? Yeah, all right, perfect. So uh, one of the things that we worked on uh, over the last few months is really kind of focusing on the question, again, of what happens uh, the day after students graduate, right? So we created some programs uh, that are targeted towards graduating San Bernardino County High School seniors, uh, the class of 2022. Uh, we really want to leverage the skills that students have gained through their CTE pathways you know, in, in their pathways over two years or two and a half or three years, and really be able to give them something in the summer in a short period of time where they can earn certifications, meet employers, grow their professional network, and really land, right, a, a job, uh, or really kind of add something on their resume that's going to elevate where they are and where they want to go, right? So we put together a couple of programs that we are piloting this summer, um, you know, coming right up. Uh, one is uh, for students uh, to become community health worker uh, certified. Uh, and the other one is for students to become uh, drone pilots and earn their certification. And so I want to share a little bit about these programs uh, with you uh, this morning. Uh, and again, I'm showing this to you on our site so you kind of know where to get more information, right? Because we won't have enough time uh, on this uh, call to kind of go through that. But take a look at this flyer. Um, you know, we've got the dates there. Uh, they're from June 20th to July 15th. You know, we wanted to target the period right after students graduate but not too long right after they've gone into the summer and we've lost them to a certain extent. Um, you know, the classes are going to be held here uh, at the Dorothy England Learning Center. Uh, and I know that's, you know, that's central for some, but further away for others. And we're trying to work on, you know, that a new iteration next year as we target our big county. Um, but, you know, here's the, the piece they have. They students get free classes and free training uh, with our partner, El Sol, who's a community-based uh, community health working, worker organization uh, that has really done work in our community uh, for, 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 for many years. Um, you know, the training and classes are valued at $2,700 uh, for our students, which they get for free. Um, they also get a $500 stipend uh, upon completion. El Sol was able to get some, some, some donors uh, from their network who are able to, to recognize our students uh, for putting in four weeks of time uh, and effort uh, but to be able to give them a stipend. But again, this is open only to seniors because we're using some of our, our funds that are they're applicable only for students who are 18 and older. Um, you know, students also get guaranteed interviews, uh, interviews with employers. 
Um, you know, we're working with IEHB, the Department of Behavioral Health, uh, and other organizations to, to facilitate these interviews. Um, you know, we also encourage our school districts, all of you out there, uh, to be able to think about how can you bring these students back onto your campuses as community health workers. Uh, you know, one of the emphasis of this particular training is on mental health um, and social emotional learning, right? And so, so we are really hopefully preparing these students to go back and serve in our communities in this area of really big need, right? And what better place for them to serve than your high schools? Uh, that's where they came from. They know your context. They can speak the language, right? And they're so familiar with the community. And so that's something else that we are super interested in working with your districts and bringing you to the table, right? Uh, giving our students real opportunities to interview uh, and hopefully right, find a job placement. Um, they'll learn how to build their resume. They'll network. Um, you know, even though the location listed here uh, is the Dorothy Ringham Learning Center, um, you know, it, it's this is a, a course that's that has a lot of field experience built into it as well. Uh, El Sol has a van and they'll transport students to different locations, um, community health centers, uh, schools, all the organizations they work with to really give them a, a really blended experience of not just learning in the class, but being able to apply their skills and competencies in the field. Right? And then they get a certificate of, of completion. Uh, you know, our target with this is our medical pathways, right? Our students who, who got the terminology, who got the experience to a certain extent, and now can kind of jumpstart uh, with this particular training. Um, but, you know, it can also be for students who are aspiring to go to medical school, right? Um, you know, and, and are hoping to be able to add this, you know, on their, on their resume. I mean, imagine the experience of having, you know, medical professionals, right, who have, who are grounded uh, in, in the cultural competencies that exist within our community. So, uh, so that's going on. If you go, go on our website, you can click here to find out more about what community health workers do. And again, this is a product of, of some of the work that um, we've done to um, give you more information about uh, community health workers. Uh, what does a life in the day look like, right? Tools for you to be able to pass on to your students so they can learn more before they make that decision, right? So that's on there as well. Um, if we go back here, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go onto this marketing material a little bit later, uh, but let's go onto the drone pilot certification and training program. Uh, and this is something that we are super excited about as well, right? Um, we know that drones are coming, um, you know, in, in, in any, in a, even right now, right? I'm sure all of you can think of at least one way in which drones are gonna impact our future going forward, right? So this particular certification and training, um, you know, are again, free classes targeting our seniors who've graduated, um, you know, and we've got um, the, the dates listed here. Um, uh, and, you know, these are a set of courses that have to be finished in sequence. So students would have to pass level one to go on to level two. Uh, they've got to do, get their drone pilot license. Uh, you know, session one, um, you know, is a way for them to prep for that exam. Uh, to be able to, to, to create and pitch a drone services business plan for them wanting to start an entrepreneurship you know, business, for example. Um, they'll meet employers and explore regional uh, drone jobs. And once they pass the test, right, they'll be, be able to proceed to level two and three. And level two and three are super exciting. They get to go, they get to, go to ground school and then they go to uh, flight line training. And both of these levels, right, take place at the airport, at the San Bernardino Airport, uh, where our partners are the uh, Unmanned Aerial System Center uh, at San Bernardino Airport. Um, you know, they, they specialize right in this work. Um, you know, I don't know if you remember those times when, um, you know, at the San Bernardino Airport, right, you would have uh, folks going in their trucks to, to evaluate and kind of see if the runway was suitable for planes to land. Now those employees there do with drones, right? Just one example of how drones are being used. But if you look again on this website, right, you'll learn more about drones here, but I wanna share with you really quickly this drone jo drones jobs guide, right? Uh, and this is again all on our website to see how much money right drone pilots can make, and then check this out, right? All of the different ways in which drones can be applicable in in these areas: drones in real estate, in construction, filmmaking, public safety, insurance, agriculture, right? Transportation, starting your own business. So the reason I want to kind of point this out is because as you think about marketing this to our students, it's not relegated just one pathway. Right? Yeah, you could certainly target you know, your drone pathway if you have one, but it can also be applicable in all these different areas. Right? Think about our public safety classes. Think about our uh, you know, marketing classes, right? our, 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 our design classes. Um, right? Think about education. Right? Uh, how can drones be used in education? Uh, think about telecommunications and energy. And as you go down here, right, you'll see uh, all the different ways in which drones can be used in these industries. So um, I want to click now to these marketing materials here. Um, 
And what you'll see, what you'll find here are the flyers that I shared with you, uh, but you'll also find presentations, right? So the presentation, uh, this particular presentation is uh, made for our teachers. Um, it can be put uh, you know, on a screen that you may have in your career center or in your counseling center uh, where, where all the work is done for you. You know, it tells you um, what, you know, what, what, would, you, what would, you, would you use a drone pilot license for? Uh, and then it kind of shows you, right? The possibilities are endless. Um, it, again, it's a way for you to, to, to not have your teachers do a lot more work, right? Uh, a teacher who's interested in this, you make, it, you make some contact with them, you know, you know, send them here so they can show this, right? As to where st students can find jobs, you know, up to about $200 an hour, perhaps, right? Um, who can participate? Uh, and all those sorts of information, ish, informational pieces that are on here as well. Um, you know, the, the, the application, the applications for both of these are going to become active uh, soon. Um, and I'll share with you more about when that's gonna happen. So um, as you think about that, we're gonna have a couple of uh, informational meetings coming up. Um, one for the community health workers on February 28th and one on March 2nd for the drones. Uh, we kept it late in the afternoon because we know your teachers, you know, are busy with school, uh, and your teams are busy, uh, and we kept it really to 30 minutes. Where we want to be targeted, but we want to show them what those resources are, where the information is located, uh, what's in the application, right? So they can get the word out, right? Who's the our audience for this? Teachers, uh, counselors, administrators, site teams, district teams, whoever you think would be able to benefit, right, from this information and can pass that along to our students. Space is limited for this. We can we're only taking 20 students in each of these. Uh, session and so it's really critical um, for for you to get your teams on here so we can get the best right and the application process is going to be a screening um, you know process we're going to work with our business partners who are on this as well and really screen those applications for our students um, Yvonne will be sending an email out uh, with a zoom invite uh, for you to share uh, and the application window for students is March 3rd through April 12th and that's why we've kept those sessions right right before the applications go live so um, uh, you know, are there any questions that I can answer really quickly that come up that you may have? Okay, wonderful. If you don't, that's great. And if you do put them in the chat as well, I've got one more uh, piece to share um, that that's super exciting, actually. Um, one of the things that, that we were notified of uh, just last Friday, late in the afternoon, when Carol texted me, uh, was that we were we we were awarded um, uh, a grant um, for uh, what's called the California Apprenticeship Innovation Grant. Um, we had applied uh, to become pre-apprenticeship sponsors, um, you know, within our region, uh, and to be able to really elevate our CTE pathways and and, and increase the number of registered pre-apprentices uh, within our our county uh, to really bridge the high school to, to apprenticeship gap. And so we were fortunate enough to be able to get that grant. Um, and, and so we wanted to kind of announce that with, to you um, because uh, we will be coming out to you and helping our kids together uh, and making them free apprentices. Um, you know, we received a, a, a $500,000 grant uh, and it is uh, to register 100 free apprentices over the three year period of the grant. And so we um, have already been engaging in this work uh, and we'll kind of go forward. Um, we have also been registered now with the Division of Apprenticeship Standards of the state. Uh, and um, filling out the, the, the paperwork, the application, uh, the linkage agreements that we need uh, to be able to get registered with them. And so, um, you know, we did that on, on behalf of all of our high schools to take away all of the administrative work that, that we don't want you to engage in. You've got a lot going on on your campuses. We want to take that away, but really afford our students opportunities uh, to be able to benefit right from these, um, um, you know, these opportunities that exist for them. Um, we also have an amazing support network in the Inland Empire. Um, you know, the, the local uh, department, Division of Apprenticeship Standards team that's based in the Inland Empire, you know, are graduates of our schools. You know, they went to the Chafee Union. You know, they went to San Bernardino City Unified School District. Uh, and so they're here. They're here to support us as well. Um, we also have the Inland Empire Apprenticeship System Navigators. And these are two individuals that were also brought on board who are working out of uh, the Chafee Intech Center uh, and Launch. Uh, and their, their job is to really promote the idea of pre-apprenticeships and apprenticeships and to really raise awareness right around this whole idea um, with all of, our, all of our constituents. And so we're working you know, in conjunction with them to make sure that our messaging is, is the same. And so when they come knocking on your doors, you know that we've worked with them 
um, you know, uh, and we're going to work in cahoots with them uh, as we kind of go forward. Um, we know there's a lot of, I know at least for me, right, we had heard the word apprenticeships uh, and pre-apprenticeships. Uh, and I know Jennifer's on this call, you know, and, and she probably has the most clarity on this, uh, but but I didn't. And I know even though those terms we are familiar with, there is a lot of um, things that we need to clarify, right, around what pre-apprenticeships are, what apprenticeships are. And so our body of work, right, with this grant, and even if we didn't get this grant, we we're going to continue with this body of work, but it's to really build a system uh, to support the integration of pre-apprenticeships uh, into our existing CTE pathways, right, where our students are sitting in, in our schools. Um, we are building um, our information and training hub um, so that we can have a portal where we've got information about the benefits of apprenticeships, the benefits of pre-apprenticeships, um, and how, we, how are we kind of connecting all those systems together. Uh, we're going to offer trainings um, to your teams, uh, to our educators, uh, about what the process looks like to register pre-apprentices who are in our classrooms. Uh, we are working with the division. Um, oh, I see a spelling error. It's funny how you catch that when you're in the middle of the presentation. But the Division of Apprenticeship Standards, right? Uh, we are working with them to modify, um, hopefully, the way they are asking us to report um, uh, and their requirements. You know, the way they have the pre-apprenticeship model in their mind, right, is for for adults, um, individuals who are 18 and over, right? So this model of, of being able to, to, to find apprentices and, and, and nurture apprentice, pre-apprentices uh, within our high school systems is new for them as well. So we're working with them on how do we kind of modify some of the requirements uh, given the fact that our students are in our schools and in our public schools. Uh, we're working with them on, uh, we're working with our apprenticeship sponsors on creating linkage agreements. Uh, again, work that, that we don't want you having to do um, you know, if we've got an apprenticeship sponsor, an employer, we're working with our apprenticeship sponsors to say, let's get into an agreement where then we can find students who are sitting in our pathways uh, and can, can become registered pre-apprentices. Uh, we're working on a, a registration, tracking, completion, reporting system um, that um, will, will coordinate with the, with the state system so that students can get registered and, and upon completion, uh, they can get their certificates that will say that you are a registered pre-apprentice with the state of California. Uh, that certificate can go straight into our apprenticeship system, uh, or, or if the timing is not right for that student, it can still stay with them. So when the timing is right, they can use it, right, to be able to get employment and gain, gain employment within our county. Uh, we're also working on um, models and templates uh, so that the curriculum that's being taught in our CTE pathways uh, aligns with what's being required um, uh, you know, uh, from our apprentice, from our employers, um, the competencies, the certifications, uh, and so we're working on that. So we wanted to just kind of share this with you and kind of build the excitement towards this work because I think it really opens up doors for our students. So stay tuned for more to come. Uh, but we wanted to kind of share that with you, Carol. Anything else to add on that? No. All right. So with that said, um, I wanted to kind of uh, give you a minute to read this. Right. It's CTE month, right? And and it's also uh, you know it's also the Super Bowl, right? So engaging in high quality surf and turf or high quality food is certainly on our minds, at least on my mind. So uh, you know I think I think with that said, um, I I don't have anything further to share uh, unless anybody has anything to share with the bigger group. Um, you know, um, thank you for joining. Um, and our next meeting will be in June on June tenth, uh, nine to ten thirty. And uh, I hope you have a great um, rest of your year. Finish strong. Uh, and and we're, get, we're able to hang out for a bit on this call. Uh, those of you that want to chat a little bit or have any questions. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you, everybody. Have a great morning.